Hi, this is CK at CK Education, and today I want to talk about public speaking. This is something that I love to do, um, I've done a lot of, and I hope to do uh, more in the future as, as um, you know, my schedule gets freed up a little bit, um, and my kids are getting a little bit older, so uh, I feel like I, I'd be able to do this a little bit more. I haven't done it in, uh, in a few years, but um, I used to speak at seminars and um, I used to hold my own seminars, you know, for like college prep and education things. And, um, and this is, is so much fun to me. Um, some people I know hate public speaking and get, getting up in front of people. And trust me, I was like that. When I was in, say, like junior high and beginning of high school, I was pretty timid. I didn't want to get up in front of people. I didn't like doing it. Uh, I was intimidated by it. I was nervous. And when, you know, I had to do it, I had to make class presentations. I mean, I did not look forward to it. Um, but I think just out of personal growth, uh, especially after college, um, it really helped me to, um, to, to appreciate that skill and to develop it and to improve on it. And I think my first catalyst was um, just going into sales. You know, after I graduated college, uh, I went straight into sales, sales and management. And man, that really forced me to just get up in front of people. And uh, when I say in front of people, it's not a big audience, of course. In sales, it was more one-on-one. -on -one. But when you go up in front of strangers, people you've never met before, and you try to build rapport with that person, and you try to build, build trust, and you try to build a friendship, and try to understand what their needs are, and try to you know, recommend products that fit their needs. And, um, you know, and you try to close the sale, you ask for the sale, you overcome objections and, uh, and, and you, you know, you have to do follow up and just, you know, just getting up and, and just greeting and meeting and interacting with strangers every single day, pretty much six days out of the week, uh, for two years straight. Um, it changed, you know, my, my, I, I mean, just developed a skill in me that I that I didn't have. Um, and prior to that, I did do a lot of, you know, speaking in front of people and teaching uh, when I was doing ministry in a church. But um, it's a whole different thing, you know, doing it in front of people whom you're familiar with and then just strangers, you know, every day you're seeing and, um, and, and you're interacting with. But that all helped me uh, a lot. And then over the years... Um, I've had to speak in front of people. Now, the last 13 years, I've been in this education business uh, that I own, and um, I'm an entrepreneur now. And so I've made um, venues and I've made opportunities f to speak in public, and I really enjoyed it. I really do enjoy it. And uh, I often joke, uh, often joke that uh, I have to pay my own money to speak in front of people because when I used to uh, rent uh, venues at hotels and and stuff, conference rooms, you know, I had to pay, I paid, and I didn't charge anything to the attendees uh, to come to the seminars. They were all free seminars. And that's how I intend to do it even in the future. Um, and I hope to do these, you know, in the coming years. But today I wanna to talk about public speaking a little bit, a uh, little bit off topic of what you might expect. I, I don't wanna talk necessarily about how to be a good public speaker and, and the nuances of that. I just wanna talk about, there are, there are some levels of public speaking. When I say levels, um, there are different levels of public speaking and they're not all the same. So for example, the first level would just be giving a speech like, you know, like a lot of politicians do. They have the teleprompters, they have the speech writers, or maybe they themselves have written the speech and then they put it up and then the teleprompter goes and they're then reading the speech and they just basically have to maintain good facial expression and know when to pause and know where to look and look over here and look over here once in a while. And you know, you're giving a speech basically or even without teleprompters, if you're doing it in school or at a certain venue, you're just basically memorizing what to say and you're spitting it out in front of a lot of people. Um, this is, I guess, the first level of public speaking. I don't even know if that would be considered public speaking in my mind, but it is public and it is speaking, so we'll consider it public speaking, okay? But that is the lowest level of public speaking that I can think of, where you're just basically giving a memorized speech. Um, now, I understand that even this is very difficult for some people. People get very nervous and so forth. And I understand that. I met people like that. I met students like that. And I understand that it's okay. But uh, that is, you know, just like the first level of public speaking. And uh, uh, I personally hate doing that. I personally hate, I've never memorized something and gone up in front of people and spoke. Um, even with these YouTube videos and stuff, uh, 
you know, it's sort of like a public, well, I'm imagining myself speaking to a lot of people, even though I'm sitting here in front of my, my camera. Um, but it's, you know, it's not rehearsed. The things that I say, they're not like, you know, I have it written down, or I'm reading from some card or something behind the camera. It's, it's all impromptu. And I just have the main ideas in my head. And then I like to say it. That's how I've always done public speaking. But the first level would be, you know, it, it, you memorize it, you write it down, and you're basically spitting it back out. Okay. So that's the first level, the easiest level, the most basic level. The second level is you're, 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 you might do that and you might do it a little bit more um, impromptu. It's not as rehearsed and you're giving, you're sharing knowledge, you're sharing information and you're doing it in front of a, a big group of people. You're sharing stories and you're, you're using per personal anecdotes and you're doing that. But at the end of it, you're taking questions. Now, this is harder because when you talk about something and then you say, uh, does anyone have any questions? And then people start asking you questions. That's a whole new level. You really have to know what you're talking about. And you really have to be comfortable in your own skin. You have to be comfortable answering questions. Because here's the thing. Someone is very likely to ask you something that you have no idea about. You have, you have not thought of that. You said, wow, that's a really good question. I don't know how to answer that. Now, I've covered in a previous video how to overcome those kinds of things. And let me just share this one thing right here about this and I'll go on to the next level. But if somebody ever asks you a question in public, uh, like you're a speaker and you're answering questions and, and somebody asks you a question and you don't know what the answer is, then instead of getting all blushed and red and in the face and nervous and like you're, you don't know what to do, you're freaking out, just stay very calm and just smile and say, Hey, you know, that was a great question. And um, I don't know the answer to that right now, but I'd love to find the answer and get back to you if I could. Uh, would that be all right? And that person, of course, in front of everybody is going to say, yeah, sure. You know, they're not going to say, well, I can't believe you don't, uh, you know, you don't know the answer to that. Um, unless they really have it out to get you, but I've never experienced that. Okay. If we're talking about just sincere, good intention people. So, you know, thanks for asking the question. It's a really good question, but I don't know the answer to it. Um, but I'd be happy to find out and get back to you um, after after the seminar or after this venue. Would that be all right? You know, so that the, saying it something like that in that order is wonderful because you're acknowledging that person. They made a great, you know, they asked a great question. So you're acknowledging that. Second, you secondly, you're being very honest about uh, your lack of knowledge about it. you just say, I don't know the answer. You know, I'm not trying to um, trick people. I'm not trying to, you know, say something I don't know. Just say it. Just say, I don't know. I, I don't really know. But don't, you don't stop there. You say, but I would love to find out. I will find out and I will get back to you personally, um, you know, after this thing. And, and, and then you ask them, would that be all right? So just to kind of close it up. Now, after the seminar or after the, the speech, you go to that person or maybe they'll come to you and say, hey, that again, I just want to say that was a great question. But uh, can I get your email or can I get your phone number? Probably email. And can I, uh, I would love to uh, find out the answer in detail. And I'll get back to you on that. Could I email you that to you? Now, that just made yourself very confident. It made you look very confident. Uh, it made you look very um, respectable and, um, and, and humble, you know, and, and you're a responsible, mature person because you're going to get back to them on it and make sure you do get back to them. I try to get back to them that day. And I've literally done this myself um, when I was uh, an engineer and a consultant. And, you know, some people are going to ask you things you don't know. And uh, I tell them I'll get back to them. And I do get back to them that day. Usually when I get back to the office or even as I'm going back to the office, I'm thinking about it. I'm making calls, whatever I got to do. And I'm finding the answer to that question. And I try to get back to them that day, usually within a few hours if I could. Okay. Again, you want to be very professional about this. And so... Um, that's my recommendation there. That's my tip. Okay. So that's the second level of public speaking. You're speaking, you talk about things, you take questions and, uh, and you're answering questions. That's second level. That's more difficult. The third level, the most difficult level, I think of public speaking is you do the public speaking and while you're doing the public speaking or at the end of it, but if you're really good, you're doing it as you speak, you are, you are trying to sell something. And, and I don't want this to sound the wrong way. I, I don't want it. People to say, well, you're trying to sell me something. You're trying to like sneak something in. It's not that people know what they're getting themselves into. People know coming to the seminar that um, you have a product or a service that you're offering and they are well aware. This is not some secret. It's not some sneaky tactic. They are well aware that that is what you do. That is what you offer. 
But rather than say at the end, so does anyone buy, does anyone want to buy my product or service? You know, that's, you know, that's not a good way to do it. All throughout the presentation, you have prepared it in such a way that at the end of it, people naturally want to sign up with you or buy your product or buy your service or purchase whatever you're offering, um, you know, almost from the stage. And so you give the presentation, you're selling from the stage, basically. And you're asking people to sign up right afterwards. There are sign-up sheets, there are things, and you take credit cards, you take payments, whatever, and you're taking reservations, whatever is on the spot. And you're answering questions. So you're speaking, you're answering questions, and you're selling from the stage. And I think that is the most difficult because, and that one is the most difficult thing to teach. I don't even know if you can teach that because that involves effective sales skills. And sales skills, um, it, it, they're, they're difficult to learn and do well, and it takes a long time. For me, like I said, early in my career, when I graduated college, I was able to, I just, I, you know, it was, it was a privilege, really, if I think of it now. Uh, I was so lucky to have gone into sales. I didn't know at the time how special and how important that skill was. But as my career went on, um, I learned, man, this is a skill. This is indispensable. This is like one of the most important career skills I've ever learned. And I'm not saying that out of any exaggeration. I really think it is. So I encourage everybody to learn sales. Um, if you want to have any success in business or just any kind of uh, uh, work where you're dealing with people and almost all work deals with people, you know, so um, this is not just to be a salesperson. It's much deeper than that. It's much more profound than that. But uh, that would be the highest level of public speaking that I can think of um, is it, it's, uh, not easy. It's very difficult. There are many steps um, and processes within the sales, um, you know, process. Um, and so in the, in the whole presentation and, um, so I'll, I'll cover that uh, in more detail, uh, maybe in one of my videos. But today I just wanted to cover that. And so hope that makes sense. And um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next video.